Well, thank you for joining our, our session on scaling automation with EY, or some people like to still say Ernst & Young. Uh, but EY is not just a, a significant partner for UiPath, but EY is actually also one of the largest global users of automation. So with that, let me introduce our, our friends from EY and then let's get into the session. So John, how about we start with you? Sure, how you doing everyone? Uh, so I'm John Russo. I've been in EY for almost 31 years, um, part of our IT organization and uh, have, been, have been involved in automation probably for 30 of the 31 years. Wow, pretty impressive. Simon? Thank you very much. Welcome everyone. So I'm Simon Constance. I'm a partner out of our London office, but I lead our global relationship with UiPath. Uh, having said that, um, I also work within our organization. So I've been helping John with our activities over the last couple of years to scale up our use of UiPath globally. You know, to date, EY has got north of 120,000 attended automations that are being used by EY professionals globally in delivery of client services. So obviously it's a massive at scale in enterprise automation deployment. So, you know, John, with that, how, how did EY achieve this level of scale with, with automation? Sure, so what we did in our journey, we started to do like many other companies do, we do proof of concepts. So we did proof of concepts and pilots, built about 20, 30 bots, realized the power of this, and then said, okay, how do we scale, right? We don't have a team yet, we were just starting to get started, so we actually reached out to our UI consulting organization and said, what are we doing with our clients? What's best practice in the industry? So they came in, dropped in a team to help us get started with the development, help us get started with structuring the organization, building out that governance model, the COE, and then really starting to pull together workshops across functions. So we were able to understand the processes we wanted to go after, the prioritization around those processes, and then to build a pipeline. And once we were able to do that, we were able to scale from that 2030 to within 18 months, we were at 500 bots, then we went to 1,000 bots. So we really built out that environment, built out that process and that engine. As someone who's um, serving clients every day, I was very glad that your team rolled that out because that saved us a huge amount of time when yeah. we're working with clients, setting up engagements, working through the processes. I think as well, John, it also gave us a fantastic platform to go on the next stage of our journey. Yeah. Um, and I was lucky enough to be able to help you and the team on that. And I think when we realized the power of the opportunity we'd created there, the next thing for us to do was to scale that up across the whole organization. Um, and if you remember, we started in our Europe, Middle East, India, Africa business, about 125,000 people there. And did a, and ran a program where we consistently rolled that out across every back and middle office function and went through all those functions, looking to find opportunities, very much using end-to-end -end automation, using the attended, the unattended chatbot tools we have, ML tools we have as well, and putting all that together, going right the way through the business on a rolling cycle of agile development. And I think when that happened off that platform, we really realized we were going to be going for scale. and. You know, I'm pleased to see now we've got that running as a global program sponsored by one of our global executive members to run it across the whole organization. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic story, right? And we're, we're getting a great perspective from someone that, that deals with the internal delivery of services to EY. And then, you know, on Simon's part, someone that's actually a beneficiary of being able to use the technology and in, in, in working with clients. So, you know, appreciate the perspectives there. So, you know, when we think about what you've done, it, it really started with a pretty significant enterprise use case. But now as you're looking at additional opportunities and use cases, I mean, a lot of people struggle with how do I go out and find those opportunities where I might deploy additional automation. So, John, give us maybe some perspective from an EY perspective, what, what your approach is to leveraging what you have and building on that current success. Sure. You know, going back, as I mentioned before, when, the way we got started is we, what we found was is if you don't really have a method to create a pipeline, what you end up with is you end up, I call it fits and starts. You end up with a bunch of bots you go after, you start building those bots, and then you get stalled because then you have to go back and look at what you're going to do next, right? So the program doesn't really get good momentum and flow. So what we did is we created these workshops to create a good solid pipeline and even my own automation team 
we always had a consistent pipeline of 50, 60 ideas. So there's always something we can go look at. There's always things to keep the team engaged and energized. And that's one of the successes is that it gave us that ability to keep looking at process, keep challenging the teams, looking at where they're going, and also making sure that you're looking at how they're performing because they're going to have to get adjusted over time. Take that now to where we're looking at how do we take this beyond just that? How do we start to look at our, our service delivery processes? As Simon mentioned, we're working with our, our core uh, executive leaders at how do we challenge our end-to-end -end processes that the firm delivers on? And how do we start to really look at all the different tools we have to be able to start going after that? So that's the next layer is to start looking at those processes and bringing in the business leaders. Because if you bring in people that can benefit from the automation, they'll be your allies. They'll be your advocates to do more because they see that direct benefit. And that's one of the successes we had is early on, we wanted to make sure we got line managers. We got, we got leaders that were able to see the benefit of the automations because they're the first ones. They're going to have budget pressures. They're going to have other challenges. So they're going to be the first ones to say, this worked great for me. How do I go and do more of it? I have to say, John, being involved in some of the more recent workshops in the last 18 months, you know, what I've noticed is by your team starting asking the question of local senior business leaders, what are the things that are giving you difficulty today, whether you're serving internal customers in a function like talent or HR, or whether you're trying yeah. to serve clients, starting from those challenges yeah. has created a real sense of energy with your, you know, with your COE team doing the design and build the business um, uh, teams who have got the problem and also, you know, business process improvement specialists we put in as well. That mm -hmm. creates a real energy about getting going and actually overcome some of that resistance that I think we may have found earlier on where people saw automation as a bit more of a threat. Yeah. And now we're starting from what really matters to them. And we solve that problem. And then we can start to get into the bigger issues that may require them to make quite significant changes to the way they work or maybe even the, the processes they run or even the operating model of that part of the business. It gives you almost license to do that. And I think that's been a big shift to allow us to scale up along with that executive support. I, I think that's a great point. And, and that's one we all struggle with, right? Is this is, mm -hmm. this is about improving people's experience, I think, as opposed to just, you know, experience, productivity, et cetera. Not, this is not, uh, there's always a lot of fear, right, of, of, yep. of, of this being a reduction tool set. And we just, that's not the way we're, we're, we want to think of this. I think it's, it's much broader. So, so with that, you know, we, we talk about all the benefits. We always know that there are challenges. It is not always a clear, happy path to success. So, so perhaps so we can provide some balance here. John, maybe, maybe a couple of things that have been, been challenges or pitfalls and, and, and things that you've done to, to, to alleviate some of those challenges in, in your organization. Think about how you can design the bot so that application changes are less of an impact to the bot, but also making sure that you're putting in the right error controls. So what we've done is actually from the experience of what we learned and, and the issues we saw, we ended up creating a production turnover uh, guide for the development teams. And that's what we use before we're gonna accept the bot into production is we make sure that they've managed the, to the guidelines and that they capture error controls in the right places because that gives us an ability to automate the operations of it. It also gives us an ability to help to tune the bot as time goes on. You know, if I reflect on our work together, I think um, two areas stand out for me. One is around stakeholder management. You know, as we've really scaled this up, we've almost been quite disruptive to the thinking in some of the business leaders that we've been working with. You know, I remember some of the work we've done around our global shared services. Mm -hmm. You know, the leaders of functions like finance and HR had ongoing plans to move work, you know, into shared services, you know, in places like India, Poland and South America. And those plans were well baked. They were probably developed three years ago. Sure. And then we turn up with this rolling program of fast paced change. And we're saying, actually, you don't need to migrate that work to shared services anymore because it's not going to exist in a human form. And I think that people found that quite disruptive and like, oh, my God, my plans for the last three years have now been changed by this team that have turned up in, in the space of three months have started building some new things. And I think managing people's expectations about how rapidly we were working, but also actually 
the opportunities we are offering them, you know, if you don't need to migrate work to shared services, you take the risk out of the migration process, you take the cost of hiring out of it. You know, those are upsides. But actually, when you've been working on a really tough migration plan for the last year, it's actually quite disruptive to have someone turn up and, 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 and take that away from you almost. So I think recognizing that when you're operating at scale, you do start to ask some big questions of an organization's ongoing plans and its uh, operating model, I think. You know, that's almost would have been worth us thinking about a bit more up front, for sure. Um, I think as well, thinking about how we integrate it with our own um, global IT systems. You know, mm -hmm. as we've really scaled up, we've come across big programs of change that we're running in IT. Now, I, I, this is this is really helpful. I mean, it really it 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 shows the 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 need for the relationship between the technology side of the house and the and the and the business side of the house, right? If you yeah. don't do that right together, these these programs typically are not very successful. So yeah. you know, with that, obviously you've gone a long way thus far in this. I say we've been on this journey together for about three years now. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I think there's more to come. So you know, what John, what's what's going, what's next? What's next for EY over the next 12, 18 months? So. Um... Taking what we, for example, taking what we've done now with, with, with Empath and where our citizen development and that piece of it, you know, what we're doing now is we have two environments. We have our Empath environment and we have everyone else. Uh, we're bringing that all together into one cohesive environment. And what we did is we said, we can go build it again, build it on-prem. But we said, let's actually look at what EY sells our clients. So we have what we call client tech CTP, client technology platform. So if you had managed services from EY, that's the platform we put you on. So what we did is we went there and we're buying that service. So this way we can live what we sell. But what it gave us is it gives us that ability to flex and to scale because we can scale dynamically as the environment grows. Because now as we all get onto one consistent environment, that's going to help us accelerate citizen development. I have to say, John, I think the teams that we have, seven clients around the world are going to be really energized to get a hold of citizen development. You know, I mean, we have some quite big groups using it at the moment, but mm -hmm. being able to scale it, um, yep. you know, our people love to think of the new. They yeah. love to engage with the new. Um, they're always looking for a way of, of saving time. They're busy enough. I think it's really going to take off for us in a big way. The other thing it's going to do is make the transformation that we're driving in the firm feel tangible for everyone across the firm. Right. You know, I think, I think as we look to where we go next, you know, for a couple of years, we've very much been on a journey led by our global executive to, you know, move our firm into a very different way of working, right? You know, digitizing the work we do, um, focusing on where we need to be close to clients and very human with our clients and human with our people, maximizing that time, but also recognizing we have huge amounts of intellectual property and know-how. Yeah. that could be so much more available to a much broader group of, uh, of clients. And we could do very different things with it. And we recognize there's comp competition in our industry that's taking some of those ideas. We certainly don't want to get behind. We want to lead. So as we drive that transformation of the firm, you know, it's not a thing that gets pushed from the global exec. It's something that feels very real to everyone on the ground, staff working all the way around the world, um, you know, with clients in every one of our service lines. But certainly, as I think, as that that drive to digitize more of our work, embrace digital delivery of our services that suit our clients and our staff, um, you know, that UI path suite that you're talking about is at the heart of that. We know our global exec team have, have, have been very much behind that program. It, it's a fantastic story, and and you know, again, we are excited to to work very closely with, with EY over the next several years as we really continue to expand this capability out with the firm.